Hello! I'm uh, shooting this little video here because a friend of mine, a guy named Nick Fryer, uh, recently uh, commented when I posted a picture of my lovely, tricked out, old school blue Rogan plus yellow Bifaco colored nuts maths that he'd seen uh, some of the content I'd posted in videos of this uh, modular synth. And he said, you know, you should post a video kind of explaining what all this stuff does. So here we are. Uh, here's the stuff. Uh, I'm going to spend a minute just kind of talking uh, pretty quickly about the basics, uh, specifically of subtractive synthesis, and then kind of maybe get a patch going uh, using the stuff here. Uh, so that's not just what it is, but why, you know, these uh, specific modules are fun and interesting. Uh, and musical and inspiring or what the heck ever. So what the Sam hell does this stuff do? Uh, there's just a couple of basic things. Um, some of these modules are analog, some of them are digital, but all of them output out of various outputs like that, um, what have you, uh, for the most part, most of them output voltage, except for these two, which is a delay unit and a reverb unit. So those are sort of classic effects. But everybody else over here uh, pretty much outputs voltage, uh, whether it's derived from an analog process or digital process. Um, voltage pretty much can do uh, three things. It can be rising, it can be falling, or it can stay static. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Those, those are the rules. Um, the only other thing is some inputs are normal. Uh, so for instance, left is normal to right. So if nothing's plugged in right into the right output, the signal goes here. These guys are normal to cross there. These are normal down this way. That'll come up later, but that's those are really the ground rules. So let's take a look at what happens when voltage moves. Um, so we've got our make noise maths. Um, which among many of the things it does is it'll generate envelopes. So if we take our output here, plug it in there, and normally I would use my BeatStep Pro to generate triggers, but since I'm trying to keep this video to just what you can see, uh, what I'm going to do is use this guy down here, um, which generates a fixed voltage depending upon where this is. So again, voltage staying the same until you move it, and then this compares. So when the knob is higher than the voltage, it sends out a gate. So I'm gonna use that to trigger the mass. So here, you can hear it, you can see down there, rises and falls. There, it's going so slow, you're not really getting the residual click. Um, but again, you can speed it up. Okay, so those are um, basically individual functions. So every time you send a little spike of voltage to there, it rises up based on this amount. So the further um, clockwise you turn it, the slower it rises. The further, further clockwise you turn this, the slower it falls. It generates an envelope. And again, you can see it. If I make the rise time a little slower, see it takes longer. Okay, so the other thing that mass does is you can cycle. Uh, so it will keep looping internally when it gets to the end of the cycle, instead of waiting for another trigger, just starts to rise and fall again. So here we have it rising, falling in a cycle. Once you speed that cycle up to a certain point, you have oscillation. basically have what we call oscillators, two different kinds. Uh, when you're cycling uh, function to function at this rate, or maybe you hear the top and the bottom, that's called a low frequency oscillation. Once you get above 20 cycles per second, and you hear a note, that's audio rate oscillation. Um, so, 
yes, I could probably use the maths as an audio rate oscillator, but I've got so many other fun ones. So for instance, this guy here, uh, the Mutable Instruments Tides, has the same thing this does. It's cycling through oscillations. Uh, you've got a waveform, a pure waveform, uh, square, so it's up when the cycle's high, and then down when it's past the peak, or it's actually up when it's past the peak, and then resets at zero again. And then here is a little trigger that fires at the end of every cycle. You can see a little blip there. Boom. Uh, it's got kind of a medium rate, and again, you can see when it gets to the top of the cycle, this one fires. And then here, Obviously, just by looking, it's audio rate. So I happen to like this one. Uh, Emily, the owner and designer of Mutables, called Tides her favorite module uh, a number of years ago. I'm not sure if that's still true. Uh, but what we're going to do So I've got this mix. It's a voltage control amplifier, but it's also a mixer. So instead of just plugging it straight in. So again, I've got the ability to shape that one. This is the raw form, so it's not affected by that. And then, so here, you can't see it, it's a, there's a triangle. That's a sign there. And then it sort of starts to twist the wave on top of itself. Uh, once you get to this, that's additive synthesis. And today we're talking about subtractive. This is fun because it kind of changes the slope. Then over here, you have a square wave. So right now we've got a note. Uh, and if it's still remembering what I did from over here, it's a C. Uh, so got our VC air voltage control amplifier. And here I have tactile control of gain. So theoretically, I could, by twisting this knob, articulate the note. Um, but who's got time for that? I don't got time for that. You don't got time for that. Nobody has time for that. Um, so let's just get a clock going here. Um, what we can do is use this like we we're using it before. And Um, sorry, I just divided this clock by four, uh, so it wasn't quite as busy. If I take it out of cycle, you can see now that and that are following each other. But again, because I can slew um, the response time, I can make it slower attack slower decay, and then I can change the curvature. Uh, in particular for what we're doing here, I like exponential curvature. So then you take this output over to here, and instead of manually turning up gain, up and down gain, you've got a voltage control of gain. So again, by the rules that were described earlier, voltage can be going up, down, or staying static. So whatever the voltage does at this input affects gain here. Very simply, if I take that to there, and then there's an attenuator that rolls off to minus infinity at this point, the amount of voltage. But now we've got articulation, right? Um, next thing uh, we want to generate is probably some pitch. Um, the easiest way to do that, obviously, is with a sequencer. Uh, that has, let's turn this off, these sliders that correspond to notes in a scale. Um, you could also, fortunately none of my unpitched sequencers are in here, so the only one I have is arguably more exciting, but also is a little, we're going to skip a few steps. but take pitch out of this guy to the
volt per octave in, which is essentially pitch, it divides each octave, each octave is represented by one volt. Um, so now, let's take that out of clock and put it into gate. Every time it fires here, fires one gate on C0. See here, no matter where I have it, So getting into some more stuff here, obviously I can make the articulation longer. Um, the last little piece of, um, of subtractive, like East Coast synthesis, is you have a, let's switch over here to, have a uh, harmonically complex waveform that's really bright and kind of crunchy, and you use a filter take some of the information out of it. So here's a uh, dope for A124 Wasp. It's a really great filter. Let's take the resonance down for now. And then there is a low pass. Uh, low pass is like an, a like on an EQ. Low pass means it only passes the stuff below the frequency point. So uh, we're cranked all the way down. Let's take the low pass out. So now we're coming back in. Oop. Of course, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> that's my volt, control voltage, which you can low pass also, but we're not gonna do that now. Fun thing about this guy, incidentally, is this resonance. It's nutty. Hmm. Can you feel that? I can feel it. Um, so again, a couple things here actually. So I'm sending pitch information here and I have a fixed frequency point that it'll cut off below. So for instance, you can see how the most, the majority of the frequency of that note is now above the cutoff point. Um, if you have a fixed low pass, that is one of the things that happens is once you go above the cutoff point, none of those frequencies are getting through. What you can do, however, is split the signal, uh, and this is what's called a buffered multiple. It's an active split, uh, which means there's no attenuation. The reason I'm running my pitch information through that is because if I just did a passive split, it would lose 3 dB, like any passive split, split does, and suddenly your pitch information isn't correct anymore. Um, it doesn't scale properly. So what we're doing here is we're getting the frequency of the filter to track So now, this is a fraction of the actual frequency. So it's all the, all the timbres of all the notes are the same, but I can make them all equally dark, uh, though it's not high passing on the same frequency anymore. It's high passing relative to each one. Um, additionally, I've got another input here, another control voltage input that affects, um, that affects, uh, frequency. So again, for like a classic sort of subtractive patch here, I can set up another trigger. And I'm just basically, here I am using a passive split because it's not pitch. It's not super sensitive. If I lose a little bit of level, it's not a big deal. I can make it up up here on the frequency knob if I need to, wherever I need to make it up. Since it's not pitch, it's not that big of a deal. Um, then I can take this guy. And 
now the frequency is also not just tracking pitch, it's sweeping through here based on the amount. So that's classic um, subtractive synthesis, right? Um, you just, again, take a harmonically complex waveform, run it through some stuff, run it through a filter to make it simpler. So if you want it really bright, Meantime, at the sort of at the end of the chain, you're uh, articulating it with VCA. Uh, the thing I like about this VCA in particular, there's a little boost on it, get a little saturation. Um, it's a nice sounding VCA. So let's uh, let's take it from here and see what we can get into. Very first thing I think I want to do is run that into some reverb. Uh, yeah. Almost to God, like half of a, half of getting anything to sound interesting uh, synthesis wise, is just getting the right signal processing on it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've got a little ostinato going here and it doesn't sound half bad. Um, but I've got some more parameters that I could automate. Um, so what I ideally would like is either another envelope, or I think what I'm gonna do instead is a low frequency oscillator. Which brings us to this guy. Um, it's just basically eight LFOs. Um, so all I have to do is take this clock. Let's, actually now let's just leave it just like that actually. I might wind up changing that. See, it's now it's following. Oops, except I gotta change. There we go. So now we're in sync. So and go up. You got eight different ones. You can select different waveforms. This is all probably very hard to see. Different divisions, so it can go fast. Let's take that. Again, I was messing around with that. See right here, we've got a control voltage input for it. So, sorry, I'm changing the stitch. some other parameters we can mess with. Um, in fact, before we do that though, let's get a little more out of our basic tone. So, brings me to this guy. Mutable Instruments Warps. Uh, first mode here is Crossfader. So it's crossfader. Um, if I take fades over to this side on input one, which is that, which is the uh, shapeable waveform, and then the other side is a square wave. a little more apparent. So, um, sorry about that. Same thing. Let's, uh, let's get uh, something to happen with this. Now, I've got some other modes over here. 
Uh, this is, they call it sample and hold CD. What it is, see it, it's um, fixed random voltages. So it's just picking a random voltage and staying at it based on the division. So here, And here, I've got voltage control over that knob. So let's see what happens. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it's also a mixer here. So for instance. Um, I think I want to maybe automate some more of this. Um, but let's... So another mode this thing does is just peaks. It's just basically a clock uh, processor. So I can take this quarter note and turn it into 16th notes if I want. So this is grids. Uh, it's a mutable instruments uh, module also, though. Uh, mutable makes all the, their modules open source. So this is Michigan Synthworks version. It's smaller, which is why I got it. I don't know. Grids takes up a little more room, and obviously, here's what I have to work with. But it's, uh, it's a drum pattern generator. But instead of inputting uh, the patterns as steps, it just has a bunch of patterns arranged on a grid, so as you change your X and Y coordinates, it's basically a map of different drum patterns, and you can change the coordinates of where you are, you can change how busy it is, so like channel 3, I can make it really busy, or not so busy. Uh, so let's take channel 2 right here. this and automate the Y coordinate. So now you notice the uh, patterns are less static. So I'm going to take uh, that right there into this little guy right here, which is just basically a little envelope generator. Every time this fires, it cycles up and down. I can make the attack slower, slow, or fast, rather. I can make the attack slower, or I can make them even. And this is just the general speed of it. It's going to be very fast. Make it slow. And let's take that. Okay, so now we got some motion on that, right? Um, let's get into this, because uh, right now it's not doing a lot. Um, so what you have is eight different steps, and you've got different behaviors. So on the bottom, it's, it's, it's muted for a step here. plays once. Then you've got these um, pulse counts. So each one of these is one. Well, if I push this up to two,
this, this next mode. Instead of adding pulses as rest, it plays one note per pulse. Uh, this sequencer is great. It's just obviously so easy to come up with. Just something that's musical and fun and rhythmic in particular. Um, So, what next? Well, I've got an entire another. Ooh. The other thing about this is there's other modes. It's like a wave folder. It's just a crossing between A and B, combines them and folds them. There's a couple different ring modulator modes. Uh, a logic mode. and a uh, comparator mode that's basically sort of a pitch shifter. But the other thing is I've got CV control over this. Which means What's happening here is it's going full range and it's hitting these last three vocoder uh, modes. Watch when it goes up to purple, suddenly we lose signal. So what I need to do is I need to actually turn down the gain on this voltage essentially, limit the range of it. Which, got another one of our little buddies here, it's the same one. Uh, not only does it provide fixed voltage, it also provides scaling. So I can scale down or the range of the voltage. Oop, too far. quantizer here. Um, so yes, this also essentially has a quantizer in it. That's why it's the voltages when they stop, stop on musically relevant pitches, but the fun part about this is, I can get in here and play it. Probably hear a uh, Dexter snoring in the background. Um, the other fun part about this, because obviously.
because I can actually just sort of perform the harmony as I go through. It's not quite as easy just holding down keys, um, but if I was going to do that, I'd be using the laptop instead of this. Um, other fun thing about this is it'll save scales and let you recall them based on uh, this input here. Let's see if I can get this to happen on the fly. So I'm going to save it. to basically restrict an LFO to pretty narrow gate's just going uh, high and low, and I'm going to need to make it so it targets those two notes. Folks, patching ain't easy. There we go. So then Hopefully when this switches back. Oops. Sorry, this is gonna take a minute. There's a bunch of other scales loaded in there.
There we go. system. It's a fancy way of saying uh, it's a four-peak filter, essentially. Um, So low pass gate is a VCA and a filter where the envelope uh, affects amplitude and frequency. So it's literally like taking the same envelope to that and that at the same time. So we can change the settings of the low pass gate. fun thing I've got here is a sequential switch, which takes one to four. That's either one input to four outputs or four inputs to one output. Notice here I've got four different outputs for the filter. Low pass, band pass, which is more like a notch, essentially, high pass, and then a smile filter, which is inverted notch. Um, so for fun, because who doesn't like having fun, right? Let's 
take all four flavors. filter to the switch. What happens when the switch gets a trigger in, it switches over here to a different input. So for instance, I could just take, again, our handy grids, which is supposed to be for drums, but you can use it for anything. I don't know if you can see this, it's switching. bad boy. instead. So, cool part about this delay is you can actually manually enter the taps uh, by actually tapping on this little thing here. So, for instance, there's that. So, what else I got to do now is get Mr. Reverb back in the mix. And I'm going to use a buffered multiple for that because, again, it's an active split. So, I'm just going to take my one channel to two. Again, these are just little Unity mixers. It takes three channels to one. What else have I not used here yet? Because, goodness, I'm running out of stuff, aren't I? Let's 
basically whenever it's flashing like that, that means it's no longer uh, quantized to the rhythm. It's just free running LFO, which sometimes you just want stuff to do its own thing a little bit, right? So we can take this. Maybe why this is fun. Obviously, it's like 50 minutes to get to this point, right? Like, um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not even using. Um, in one sense, yes, this is sort of a composition, and you can go through and play it as an arrangement, for instance, just by simply. Maybe start here. build from there, right? The other, the other thing, and this is honestly what I tend to do more, is maybe take this and do a performance and then add other layers to it. But you can kind of see how this is a, a way of getting, uh, incorporating sound design into the compositional process where you're as much invested in the sonic as you are in the musical notes. And obviously, 
to me and like my approach, I would come back and maybe improvise over this with a reed instrument that I'm a little more facile on, obviously, uh, because you can see how this setup doesn't really lend itself to being very quick, at least not when I do it. There's people who are very fast with it. Hopefully uh, that was interesting and enlightening, uh, at least a little bit. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.